the great taste of Manitoba. All right. So, as I said earlier, this is a technique, and uh, the, what you end up uh, is with a chicken that cooks more quickly mm -hmm. and more evenly. So uh, today everybody's pressed for time and it's nice to have a whole chicken for supper. You can feed you know four to six people with one whole chicken mm -hmm. but you don't want to have to spend a lot of time waiting for it to cook. So doing the spatchcocking technique um, makes it cook much more evenly and a lot quicker. I have to ask you the, just the word. Is it British? It just sounds... Um, it is, yes, is it, it is a British okay. word, yep. Um, lots of different variations on where it came from, mm -hmm. um, but the end result is that it is um, a chicken that has the backbone removed. Right. And flattened. It's the thing that amazes me is that it, it, this is one of those things that just seems so simple and so obvious. I don't know why we haven't been doing it for much longer, at least in, in this part of the world. And that's a really good question. I don't have an answer for it, but after today, everybody yeah. will be doing it. I think so, because it's the kind of thing that's really catching on. Well, exactly. More and more yeah. and you, the nice thing is you can do it in the oven, you can do it on the barbecue, so you've got lots of variations mm. for, for cooking, uh, the method of cooking. Mm. But before we do that, we've got to get this spatchcock. Let's get All going. right. So um, you can do this on any size of a chicken, whether it is the Cornish game hens, the really small one, mm -hmm. all the way up to the heavy roasting chicken, so something that's six, nine, ten pounds technique is exactly the same. So I've got the whole chicken and what I'm going to do is you have to flip it over because we're going, I'm going to remove this part of it. This is the backbone right here. So that has to come off to allow it to, uh, to be flattened. Right. It doesn't matter which side or which end that you start from. Um, and you notice I'm using heavy duty scissors. You can use poultry shears if you've got them. I don't like using a knife just because if something slips um, and you're pulling the knife towards you, uh, that's a kitchen accident we don't want to no. talk about. No. All right, so you, this is the, the tail and I'm just going to go on one side and again with the scissors and I'm just cutting through the ribs and sometimes you actually have to take both hands unless you've got stronger grip strength than I do. So all the way down just like, like that. And then exactly the same thing on the other side. It's just that easy. Yep. You've got a good set of, of scissors and your pan does not slide like this one is. All right, and okay. So that is the backbone, just get rid of would that. Would you just get rid of it or would you keep it for a stock or? You know what, this would make a really good uh, stock. Yeah. All right, some people also, um, you know, some pets, this would be suitable for some, oh, for right. some pets. So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to, to go to waste. Now, the next thing that we're, I'm gonna do is flip it back over onto the front, right. like so. All right, and what I'm gonna do is take my hand and push down on the this part oh. of the breast. Really, yeah, make sure it doesn't yeah. shoot out the other side. And essentially, that's flattened it. All right? So that is a spatchcock chicken. Looks like a heart. It? Yes, it does. It's an I heart chicken. There we go. All right, at this point, uh, if you choose, you can take the skin off. Um, I like taking the skin off because when I'm adding a rub, um, my family doesn't eat chicken skin, so if I put a rub on the skin and then take the skin off, I'm losing all the flavor. Mm. So by removing the skin, you can put the rub right on the meat and you get all that wonderful flavor. The other option you can do is this can be marinated, which uh, I'm going to show you a little bit later. And in that case, if you want to leave the skin on, that's fine. So I'll show you how to start taking the skin off. Alrighty. The easiest way, and I'm going to, normally I would do this facing me, but just so that, that everyone can see at home. I like to start from the fatter end, the top of the heart, so mm -hmm. to speak, and just lift it up, and you can actually get your fingers underneath the skin, and with your fingers, you're just going to Loosen slide, it up yeah, just like so, mm -hmm. and you're just going to pull back. If you're having trouble gripping the skin, something that I find works beautifully is to put a bit of paper towel and hold the skin with, the hand, with paper towel. And that just gives you an extra, uh, an extra bit of grip. So you can just slide all the way down and then you're going to do exactly the same thing. With the legs, you can actually just push 
It's quite right easy, Right through, yeah. Now, there is one little thing when you're taking the skin off. I never take the skin off the wings. And the reason for that is that it's almost impossible to get skin off the wings. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do in that case is I'll just take my scissors and I'll just cut the skin around and leave the skin on the wing and remove the skin from the rest of the gotcha. chicken. Gotcha. So that's basically that's all there is to the technique of, of spatchcocking the chicken. And uh, then I'm going to show you what kinds of things you can do to add flavor once you've got the chicken spatchcocked. Terrific. We'll uh, continue taking the uh, skin off this uh, chicken. We're spatchcocking today. Uh, the whole show dedicated to that. Karen Armstrong, Manitoba mm -hmm. Chicken. We've spatchcocked the chicken. That's now right. we're going to get into the, uh, the business of the seasoning Adding flavor. and flavor. That's right. Uh, and the first one we're going to do is a rub. And a rub is the simplest and the quickest way to add some additional flavor. Uh, basically, you, it's a blend of seasonings. You put it on the chicken and you're ready to, uh, to cook it. The seasonings that you choose Sky's the limit. Whatever mm -hmm. your favorite flavors are, what I'm going to use today... And these are the colors in your sky. Exactly. Yeah, kind of interesting colors for a sky, it's but anyways... It's almost a shame to mess that up. This is a work of I art. Know, I know, I know. I tried so hard to get this Looks to like look like Looks like one of those like things this. you do with sand in a, yeah, in a glass kind of. jar. Yeah, but this is going to be much tastier. Yes, I imagine it would be. <laughs> so this rub has got brown sugar, uh, some coarse salt. This is kosher salt. Uh, the next largest ingredient or, or the greatest proportion is paprika. And you can use a smoked paprika. You can use Spanish or Hungarian. It's whatever flavor of paprika you like. Then I've got onion powder. The other white one over here, that's garlic powder. Mm -hmm. Then I've got some lemon pepper. I've got, uh, this is ground sage, which is an interesting flavor, works very well with poultry. Always does. Cayenne for a little heat. Oh yeah. This is ground basil. And then uh, in the back here. A green uh, one, another <laughs> green one. Lighter green. Yeah, so we've got sage, we've got basil, and the last one at the moment is, it is completely escaping okay. me. But that's okay. It's all gonna get mixed together. And I'm just gonna do that with this, yeah. this fork. Well, that works, yes. Our official taste tester will tell us. No. <laughs> it's, it's one that goes with sage. Yes. When you're doing a chicken. Time. Time. That's, yes. Time. Yes. Gentlemen, please. Yes. Exactly. So, just going to uh, mix this all together, and then all you have to do is just rub this on top of, of the chicken. You're going to rub it all over. And as I said earlier, it would be ready to go in the oven as soon as you've covered the, the chicken in the rub. Or if you prefer, you know, if you've got some extra time the night before, it's quite all right to, to put the rub on the night before and just uh, cover it up with some plastic wrap and put it in the fridge overnight. What's your preference? Um, it really depends on how, how pressed for time I am. Yeah. If i am got to make dinner right away, then I'm just going to get my rub and off it goes. This makes enough for two chickens. So when I when you put the rub on, you want to make sure that you're uh, that you're not getting the rest of the rub in contact with the raw right. chicken because the leftover rub, as long as it hasn't touched the raw chicken, put it in a Ziploc bag and save you can save it for next time. So and that also saves time. Exactly. So let's get this on, and I like to use a spoon to just distribute some of the rub, and then I will actually get in there and get dirty with my hands. Make sure you get the wings, very important to get the wings. All right, so you can see by using the spoon and not touching the chicken, all of this can be saved for another, for sure. another thing. All right, and then just... Rub a dub dub. Exactly. Oh, that just even comes like, out um, much darker when you actually it rub does. it in. It does, yeah, because it's combining with some of the juices of the, the chicken. Mm -hmm. And there we go, that is, this is an herb brown sugar rub. And this is ready to go into the oven. Now you don't have to worry about all the other nope. little extra bits. You just leave them there. You can leave them there. You don't have to put any nope. oil or anything. It's ready to go. The only other thing you want to do is get your digital thermometer in here to right. make sure that uh, when the chicken is cooking, it's cooked to the proper temperature. A spatchcocked chicken avec la rub. This is a marinade and a glaze. I'm starting off with 10 cloves of garlic. Just about perfect. Yes, and some lemon juice. I'm going to add uh, some uh, hot paprika, some chili powder, some cumin, and some uh, salt to this. And Do you use some, the coarse salt again, it looks yep, like? Yep, coarse yeah. salt. And orange juice. So this is a citrus, uh, citrus honey uh, marinating glaze. 
And I'm going to blend this up. There's a little oil in here as well. All right, that's done. And if you would do me the honor of uh, holding the bag open. So it's my favorite marinade in a plastic resealable bag. So this is going in just like this. All right, it doesn't take long when you've got a nice hand blender uh, to get mm -hmm. all of those garlic cloves pureed. All right, seal the bag. What did we do before these bags came out? I don't, we, we did a lot more dishes. Yeah, that's a right. An awful yeah, lot yeah. more dishes. All right, I'm gonna squeeze some of the air out. You did already, excellent. Make sure that that is sealed yeah. because you're going to just turn this over so that all of that marinade and with your nice white shirt, please make sure the bag is closed. Not to worry. All well, right. actually. You are a professional, I know. Not really, no, no, just um. All right, this would now go in the fridge mm -hmm. overnight um, or if you're pressed for time, no more than 30 minutes at room temperature. But you absolutely have to promise that you're not going to, to leave it more than 30 minutes that's at room a temperature. Issue, isn't it? It's yeah. a safety issue, safety exactly. Issue, yeah. So that's why I prefer to do this in the fridge. You can also uh, get this to this stage and get it into the freezer. And that way, the next time you've got a craving for marinated chicken, you pull it out oh, of the really? freezer, stick it in the fridge, and it'll marinate and you'll be ready to go. Just make sure you get that much more of the air out. That'd uh, probably as possible, be a good right? idea. Yeah. All right. Now, um, once I pull this out of the fridge after it's marinated, I'm going to take the chicken out, put it on a, a roasting pan, but I'm going to save the marinade. And that's what I've got here in the pot. Uh, this is marinade that I've uh, boiled for five minutes uh, just to make sure that uh, any of the chicken juices are fully cooked. Again, it's safety. Yep. Safety issue. And as I said, this is an uh, a orange honey. So let's add. That's where the honey comes Yes, in. the honey. And this is what gives you the glaze. So uh, about three tablespoons of Manitoba honey go into this. And then about 15 minutes from the end of the cooking time with your chicken, you uh, baste it with the glaze and you have an absolutely fabulous chicken dish. We did uh, an herb and uh, brown sugar rub to add a little bit of flavor quickly. And then the last recipe that we did was uh, a marinade with orange, lemon, garlic, and honey. And lots of garlic. Lots of garlic that we then uh, turned into a glaze to brush on during the last 15 minutes of cooking. The Great Taste of Manitoba.